Okay, it is Tuesday the 14th of September and we're doing a new breaking podcast on, on Tuesday. It's a little early than our normal Friday slot and I'm joined by Eddie Donmez to talk about something you may have read about but a company you might not know a lot about which is Evergrande which is one of the world's most indebted companies. Its shares have tumbled 75% this year and it's sparking fears among what analysts are saying a risk of contagion spreading from China and their property market to potentially not just domestically, but to foreign shores. So, Eddie, who are Evergrande? <laughs> yeah, Evergrande, probably not too familiar for the for general Western public viewers, but very familiar in China. Uh, but it's a very, very large property developer. So everyone's now terming this, you know, China's Lehman Brothers moment, or if Evergrande is going to be the next Lehman Brothers. So this story has really been rumbling on for a while, actually. Um, you know, this, their shares are down 80% year to date, but it's really reaching fever, fever pitch at the moment. Uh, there's riots and protests outside the, the offices of Evergrande. Um, and of course, now there's serious fears that this uh, company could go through a bankruptcy. Uh, and there's a kind of difference between a, a chapter 11 bankruptcy and a chapter seven. They've now hired Houlihan Loki as one of its kind of bankruptcy advisors. Just yesterday, they were talking and basically dismissed the rumor uh, that they were facing kind of bankruptcy fears. But now this is really kind of coming to a head. Uh, and what's led to this? Why are they in trouble then? So <laughs> they've got 310 billion yes, I said billion, in liabilities. So they've got 7 billion of debt due next year, and I think 670 uh, million in just coupon payments due this year, so just the coupon payments. So they've got a huge amount of debts, uh, but not only debts. So of course, liabilities we kind of associate with debt. So basically uh, to, to pay creditors. But they've also got things like accounts payable, uh, kind of a boring accounting term. But what this basically translates into is kind of payments for suppliers, for things like raw materials. Of course, they've got the wages for the uh, employees, uh, you know, the rest of the kind of inputs for their kind of construction costs. So they're in this really wicked liquidity crunch at the moment because, of course, property developers, they build properties, right? But unfortunately, they can't, they don't have enough liquidity to finish the projects that they're already working on to then sell, to then finance a new construction. So they're in this kind of liquidity crunch where they're, it's really kind of spiraling out of control. So, so leads to the question then, what's next? Surely the government needs to step in at this point. So, of course, context is everything. Uh, and as we've seen, the CCP has been really like clamping down on mainly the technology sector. So the names like Alibaba, for example, and we all know Jack Ma went missing uh, last year, um, but they've also been kind of crunching down on really data companies, technology companies, user data. Um, so now this is something that they really do not want to deal with, I'm sure. Um, but whether a kind of state bailout um, is kind of warranted at the moment, uh, or desired is probably um, not, not too true. Um, they're most likely, there probably will be a kind of state intervention of some kind, but they will not want to kind of bail out Evergrande completely. But of course, they've hired Houlihan Loki and Admiralty to kind of advise on this reorganization. Potentially what co could come next is a kind of fire sale of assets. So to, just to put into context as well, the revenue of this comp company monthly has dropped from 11 billion a month to 5 billion from kind of June to August of this year. So their sales have dropped off a cliff. Um, they've been providing kind of discounts, like 30% discounts for their properties to kind of get them sold. Uh, but this is still not working. Um, so they're in a real kind of pickle, um, to, put it, to put it lightly. And yeah, the government is going to have to step in in some capacity. Um, it's just really to, to what extent. But so in terms of the kind of contagion element of this, 
Of course, it's the property developer itself, it's the creditors, so those uh, that have kind of lent money, it's the shareholders, the equity holders, which are likely to get nothing. And these are kind of um, some of the top holders of uh, Evergrande, of, uh, big names like, like BlackRock. Um, so they're, the equity is likely, if there is a kind of liquidation, they're likely to be zilch. So that equity will be worth nothing. Now, the kind of credit holders, uh, so the, the dollar-based, so the dollar-denominated Evergrande bonds are likely to get something in a best-case scenario of something like 25% of their money back. Um, but of course, you know, that's not guaranteed. Um, so it's a, it's a real pickle that they're in. They probably will need uh, some kind of state intervention, but they may just kind of claim the assets and step in. And it could be this kind of weird scenario where they've got what they wanted, uh, if you like, where they've kind of seized, they're able to seize the assets and seize control. Mm. Yeah, and, and in the context of the global markets at the moment, there's been an awful lot of growing chorus on Wall Street turning a little bit bearish about the general US stocks picture. And this is just probably another variable to throw in the mix at the moment. There was a Deutsche Bank sentiment survey came out yesterday that found 58% of professional investors see a five to 10% correction by year end. It's like people are just looking for ammunition at the moment. So I'm sure this story is going to get a lot of airplay today when we open in the US. Yeah, definitely. I think the mood music as a kind of Piers and I were discussing in the podcast before last has kind of got a little bit more somber with the kind of general economy sentiment kind of falling off a cliff. Um, but really the Evergrande story is now becoming potentially uh, a systemic risk when you add on all of these different types of things. Um, and again, they're not just a property developer. They have electric vehicles. Um, their electric vehicle arm shares were down 22% um, yesterday. And they have kind of other, you know, uh, correlations with other kind of different products. They have wealth management arm. Um, so there's a lot of kind of different risk out on the horizon in this kind of could spill over, but it's definitely a story now to have on top of the radar, I would say. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Eddie. And just for the listeners, we're going to be doing lots more of these kind of breaking news podcasts, YouTube videos, Instagram reels, and so on. So remember, we've got the new Amplify Me platform launching actually tomorrow, 15th of September. So you can check that out at www.amplifyme.com. For Eddie, thanks, and I'll catch you for the next episode. Thanks, Anne.